All right, welcome back. Today's video, I'm back working on Angus. For those who don't know, Angus is my 81 C10, 81 single light. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, getting LS swapped. I got a 5.3 out of a junkyard marketplace something. Ooh. A two wheel drive 4L60E I'm putting in. Ooh. And today, I'm filming on a new camera. I got a new phone. So we'll see how well this does. Secondly, or B, and pal is over there, kind of snow covered. I got the garage warmed up to 40 degrees. Ooh. Oh my gosh. That's pretty warm when it's 12 out. Sheesh. Anyway, stuff we got to do today. That cross member's got to come out. Yep. Uh, we've got to the linkage right there for, I think it's cruise control. We gotta pop that off because we're drive by wire, not drive by cable. Scratch that, reverse that. We're drive by cable, not drive by wire. So we need the uh, gas pedal one. So we're gonna take that and just loop it up out of the way. Uh, you can see my harness is still because you know I'm waiting on parts. Ordered up a battery cable to go from there because I'm not relocating my tray over to here. So I ordered up a long cable to plumb in there. Still on ordered, back order. Uh, also, a whole bunch of wire loom that I ordered for making this all pretty. That's on back order too. But there's a box right there. It's got my headers in it, and it's got my little sensor in it that I got to put into that. So we'll get to that today. So first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and get the harness that I set here up out of the way. Um, yeah, kind of want to be careful with it because I got it labeled and everything. I don't want to lose any of my labels, but it's in the way, so it's got to get out the way. Okay, for those who don't know, this is the little bracketry for uh, GMs. You got your gas pedal on there, and then you got another doodad majigger thing for your um, cruise control. If you can set that up, and then it goes over your cruise control module. Uh, these clips right here. You just go ahead and push them in and then pull it out. We're going to save that, save this bracket in case we need it for the LS on the intake. Um, we'll just have to modify something if need be. So let's go ahead and pull that off. Okay, so as I mentioned, you just take a pair of pliers, go ahead and just squeeze it on in. You know, just squeeze it in and what happens, you can usually Get that tab to wiggle out. Kind of like so, and then it comes off. And then you make this part disappear. Yep. So this is good, this is our gas pedal, accelerator, wire, cable. So we'll just put that, you know, or that. We'll just you know, do something with it. Stay. Okay, or not. It, it wants to be in this general area. So while we're in here, just a quick recap. Our wire's coming out of the block, or our bulk fitting head. That guy over there. That guy over there. You got this big red wire right here. It's got to get hooked to a positive, which is going to be that lug right there. This is, of course, my 03 GMC fuse block. Then we have this orange one which is in a switched ignition source so we'll have to hook that up to one of the relays then we got this purple one which is down to the starter then we got this green one which is to the horn then we got this one right here which goes to temp sensor and then we got another red one right there which comes out over to here that's got to be all time power positive too i'm not going to use this i'm actually delete it but i didn't feel like deleting on it right now but eventually that'll come off and then it'll go over to my lug over there that's really it all you need um i know i recap this on my wire harness video but yeah uh oh yeah and then this one right here as you can see this little orange one right here right there 
That's for your fuel sending unit to make your gauge go. So for the time being, I'm going to use the stock mounts. Um, I'm going to pull these out here. Um, I actually have the clamshells from the LS, and then we had those IECT brackets that those clamshells will bolt to, and then the clamshells will go in here, and we'll get our right position. So I'm going to pull these bolts off, and we're going to strategically place them. There's the other one. Sorry for the crotch shot, but it's down there. So we'll get those uh, removed. We'll remove that transmission mount. Then we'll be pretty damn close to getting this LS dropped in here for the first time. See how things fit placement wise and everything. Um, I'm anticipating on it being just an absolute cluster. So we'll see. So back out, motor's uncovered. Uh, I'm going to have to do some quick cleanup, timing cover, get all this junk out. There's some dirt down in the valley cover. I don't want to get down the Mr. Camshaft down there. So I'm going to grab my shop vac, suck it all out, clean all this stuff up, um, give it a good once over, try to knock some of this stuff off. And then I have a new sensor. We're going to replace that guy. Yeah, so time to clean. Okay, guys, uh, you can just imagine some vacuuming noises. Time lapse just kind of stunk. You really couldn't see much, so I'm going to cut it short. Okay, so I got a lot of crud off of there. I'm going to do a quick wipe down on it. So next thing we got is this oil pressure sending switch. There's the part number. Got it off Amazon. Uh, Eight, ten bucks wasn't much. That's what it is. As you can see, mine, the top part broke off compared to that. So I have nowhere to plug it in. Inch and one sixteenths. They do make a specialty one for when it's in the truck, but lucky us, it's not in the truck. So go ahead and get that off. I don't know what the torque spec is on this, but it can't be very much. It wasn't on there very tight. So I'm going to have to get the vacuum, clean up some of that crud. So the new one comes with a crush washer. Just make sure you put it on there properly. And if you do this in your truck, they have a specialty socket. I think I already said that, but <laughs> why not repeat things? multiple times. Torqued. Ooh. There I go. Good deal. Okay, so that's all cleaned up. Took some uh, brake clean and pssst, cleaned it up. Vacuumed it all up too to make sure any particles didn't fall through there. Here's the uh, valley cover I got. Another ICT Gen 3 LS valley cover. There's the part number. Um... Make sure you get a gasket. I don't have a gasket, so I'm going to have to just goop on some uh, RTV. I don't know. Maybe I'll look and see how much a gasket is quick. Nope. Not going to goop one on. I had to uh, order one. It's 30 bucks. Here's what I got. Okay, guys, here's what I ended up ordering. Uh, it's just going to be on the shelf because I ended up being able to utilize the old one and it cleaned up really nice. So I got the old one. It actually cleaned up really well, so I'm just gonna use this one. We'll see why not. Um, it looks like it does have a directional way it goes and that's not it. That looks like a little bit better right there, so take that consideration when you're putting these on. Uh, other thing I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna just going to put a small little bead of RTV on the bottom of this thing and on the top just to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't slide when I'm trying to put that valley cover on. Okay, those are gaskets on. Put some sealing on there, some RTV. And now we just put that on there. Something like that. Kind of line it up.
Sweet. So wrong or right, I'm just kind of going through and just snugging these up. Started with the two front ones, oozed out. Middle ones kind of oozed out over there. Did the back ones, and now I'm going from here, go to here, go to here, back to there. And like I mentioned, I'm just finger tightening them so I can let that goop kind of set up. You those directions in there have some kind of torque specifications, but you know, we'll just, we'll do what we want. Guess what I forgot to do. <sighs> so what was this thing that they said? Work harder, not smarter. Yeah, I think that was it. Something like that. Anywho, you can see as I just squish that one down, I like just a little bit of Loctite coming out of those when I actually remember to put it on there. And that way I know that, A, I did it, two, it's secured. Okay, so now we're on to the steam port. Um, you guys don't know there's block offs back there back there and there's front port here front port here where this guy kind of i don't know does that and pops on there like so then it goes up to the radiator and it, the idea is a truck sits like this and that goes to the highest point which is going to be right there burps bubbles you know let's steam out but I don't know if I want to reuse this one because it's kind of gaudy. There's a couple of kits out there that will take the blocks from the back, run nice and neat underneath here, connect, <clears throat> and then to the radiator. Um, I might purchase some of those and see if I could just maybe make one. Um, a range anywhere from like 23 bucks for just two of them with some block offs up to like $200 for a full bent awesome set so I think the nice ones like motion race works or something but I think we could figure out something trying to keep this on a low dollar budget so I'll throw the valve covers back on keep some junk out of here cover the intake and that's going to wrap this part up for today be back on it here tomorrow. Okay, welcome back. Another day working on the LS. I got kind of a mess going on here, but um, yesterday we got the uh, valley cover put on. It's dry. Dried. Um, <clears throat> I did have my other gasket that I ordered showed up. Ordered it on Amazon and, you know, go 15 minutes later to cancel it and can't cancel it so it shows up but whatever got a spare one on the shelf that'd be nice <clears throat> um unfortunately i wanted to get this thing primed up with oil today and i can't um what i'm gonna have to do and it's gonna be a later video is we're gonna knock out this plug right here i don't know if you can see that yeah, that guy right there. I got some other parts coming from Amazon and we'll have like a uh, priming the LS video coming up. So we'll get to that. But today I figured some other stuff showed up. My cable finally showed up, battery cable. Got some hardware. We're gonna end up mounting up that. Finally, we're gonna run the battery cable um from over here over to the, there and i'm gonna get underneath and get that transmission cross member taken out and that'll wrap this part up i think and then um next video hopefully we'll get the ls primed up get it made it up to the transmission and probably stab it into here see how things fall set the harness on start plugging the harness in Maybe fire it up. I don't know. Gotta get there first. Get this stuff done. Got the hardware and that. That is nice and secure now. Not going anywhere. Got a little clamp. I'm gonna squeeze that together, but 
Now we gotta worry about the battery terminals, or uh, yeah, cables that came in. So you can see this one is pretty damn long. Um, it's already got the gold plated and it's got a wing nut on there to add, take away accessories, so on and so forth. Um, this is actually a battery relocate kit for uh, from Amazon. Like 40 bucks, I think. Came with a uh, shorter, like three foot um, ground cable. And then it came with a 12 foot uh, positive. A little bit nicer than that junk right there. That might cause a fire. Or that one over there. Okay, battery cable's mocked up. Got the ground there. Got some extra service loop. Uh, positive side is up there too. We'll wrap it around. Just have it zip tied up here to the firewall. Down here, just twirled up. Uh, it reaches back here to the fuse block perfectly. Uh, next step is going to be mounting this to there. Pretty simple. I just took a uh, U-bolt from... I remember what the hell it was for. Oh, I think it was for the cell phone holder for my uh, trailblazer. Anyway, I just hacked it in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through right like so. And see if I can zoom in there. You can see down there I have it cleaned up pretty well. And what's this, what this is going to do is it's going to go in here and I'm going to weld it right to there on this side and then on the back side over here. And that should give me a uh, nice little support to support up the fuse block. Okay, there we go. Just uh, hit them with some, cleaned them up, got some black paint. Well, it's not the nicest, but there's the front one, there's the back one. And as long as it holds up, we'll be fine. So moving on to the next step, but let's drain. Okay, guys, here's the uh, kind of the final mock-up. Um, I had to stop and search for a cable to go from that terminal over to where the front of the LS is going to be and then down to the starter location. The ones that I had were pretty bad. Um, I ended up making them. I had a couple, just put some ends on that I'm gonna end up using and probably show in a later video, but the next little segment here, I'm kind of searching through some stuff, but that's kind of the the end here, what it looks like when it's all mocked up. Of course, waiting for my wire loom. Okay, so now we're on to uh, trying to figure out what kind of connectors we gotta hook that one ignition switch up to in the C10. Um, go to lt1swap.com. On the main page here, what you're going to find is you'll see wire harness info up here. Uh, click on that. It's going to come down here and show you all this information here. Um, you just pick your year you're looking for if you're doing an LT1 from 92 to 7, 96 to 99. LS, 98 to 902 Camaro Firebird Harness. You got 2001, 81. Um, GTO, it's got everything on here. Of course, we're going to go with the 99 to 2007 5.3 harness info. And when you click on that, it's going to break it down even further. Goes by identify your Vortec engine and year, info 2003 plus, uh, tack wire, air conditioning, drive by wire, drive by cable conversion, under hood fuse block which that's what we're looking for because we're going to go in there. Um, and it says if you're using the stock fuse block 99 plus Vortec harness to power your vehicle's engine, click on there. It's also got the PCM pinouts and like what we did here when we did the harness. But we're going to click under the hood fuse block page and it's going to pull up all the information that we need. Okay, guys, I got it figured out where I'm going to have to get into this here tomorrow. Um, of course, we got on our C1 block, uh, we're going to have pin A9, which is that one right there. That's where the ignition wire from the C10's harness is going to have to hook up to. 
Um, I have to find that C1 plug, otherwise I'll just have to solder it or do something into there. Uh, the second one is going to be this B11. That has to be to a 12 volt power source. Um, I don't know if you can see that in there. But that can be just as simple as a jumper. If you flip that over, there's a relay right there. And what it does is that's what relays everything up and it powers up your power block, which is really simple. So if I can't figure out this, I'll just um, honestly use a jumper and put it on the top side um, and try to figure out something from, from the other end here to power everything up. Um, the other thing that we're gonna need to go get into is the C2 is on our harness now. And then we're gonna get into the C3. Now the C3, the F1, which is right here circled, that's what we're gonna use to trigger our fuel pump. So I'm gonna get into it tomorrow morning and I'm gonna start wiring up on that C1 block and see if we can at least get it to make some, some noise. Um, kind of go from there, but see you tomorrow. And welcome back. Today is the next day. It's cold out. It was negative 18 this morning. We got the garage pumping some heaters going. I got it up to 40 in here. Ooh. Let me show you where I'm at with stuff on the C10. Uh, sketchy, I know. But, so I got my little uh, battery there. I got my little Harbor Freight trickle charger charging that thing up. Got a set of jumper cables, ran in here. Got the fuse block pulled off already. Um, I got it pinched to my two terminals that I need to have power to all of the time that go into the truck that are going to be on the fuse block. And you can see I got this little wire hanging out here. Now, the theory is, you see I got it grounded over there too. Keep your eyeballs on the multimeter. Can. So you can see it goes up to 13.4 volts. And that was simply me just touching it to the wires there and grounding it out. Um, now when we do the wire right Baba there, boy. it stays at zero. So we come into the truck and oh, turn the ignition on to Akaka, like you're gonna start it. That should, in theory, connect the circuit to that orange wire, thereby powering it up. So now, when we hook the multimeter back up, I'm gonna hook it to this ground, and I'm gonna hook it to the wire here. Baba boy. We should have voltages come across the screen here. Let's see what we get. Ooh. Get better ground on it. Ooh. There we go, 13.4 volts. What that means is what we found yesterday looking at that lsswap.com is we can run that wire, this guy right here, Baba Bowie. to this said relay harness, have it somewhere mounted back on the firewall back there. When this powers up that relay, that relay is going to power up the fuse block, which we're going to use that A9 pin and B11 pin, that's gonna provide power to the entire fuse block. And then by doing a relay like this, if we wanna add any accessories later on, we got the five pin, so we got an extra wire that we can just tie into, like so. You see it's got five wires on it versus the normal four style relay. So if we want anything keyed down the road, we can just tap into that and not have to worry about taking the fuse block off, blah, 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 blah. Smart thinking, not really. So let me get you in and show you those pins really quick. So fuse block as it sits, it's gonna be of course backwards in there, but you flip it over and you got your C1 plug, your C2 plug, C3, C4. Uh, C1 is what we're looking for for the 
keyed service. The only two we need is A9 and B11. So if you look closely, you can see they got it etched A, B, C, D, E, F. And then of course, along this side, we got 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Don't mind me, that's from my welding yesterday. So we gotta find A9. So we go up to here to A, go down to number nine, which is gonna be right there. And we gotta pin that. Next one we gotta do is pin a B11. So next one over is gonna be B11, so right there. That one's gonna go to 12 volt source. This one's gonna go over to our relay. And what that's gonna do is power up everything on here. Uh, the other one I mentioned earlier yesterday, the C3, we gotta go to F1. This is a C3. And then F1, F, right here in the bottom corner. So we'll put a wire on that, hanging out. I don't know where my other blocks are. This one's of course on the harness still, but I'm just gonna made up some prongs out of that and put them in here with some wires and call it a day. So get that done and get back here with you. Okay, so here's where we're at. Got it all rigged up again. Ignition switch is on and I got the relay wired in. I got all my hot leads hooked up. So now when we go through to ground it out, we are going to Should you the relay click? Yeah. So the key is gonna come on, it's gonna click that relay, it's gonna send power to the lead there that the multimeter is still hooked up to. And it's gonna go right into that A1 plug right here. It's gonna trip that relay. This is gonna be powered to the box. And there we go. We're gonna be able to get our power to our block. Also, I got that wire kind of just hanging out. I did start labeling them. Uh, this is my fuel pump switch. Got it taped off so when it's in there, those are the little prongs. I just bent them out and they are very, very secure. They ain't going anywhere. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna get this all buttoned up and make it look pretty and then I'll come back to you. Okay. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm not going to mount the computer right here. I'm actually going to mount it right here. But you can see I got power cable. It's ran up underneath there. Kind of just tucked in there and used a little clip. Some zip ties for right now. I want to get the radiator in there before I do a final mount. I got to put some other um, stuff there. Um, fuse block is pretty much in here temporarily. I got the lug back here with all the powers that I got to have. I got my relay mounted right here. Might lengthen this wire, it's a little taunt, but it's all right for right now. Uh, I got the harness laid out. I'm gonna run it back into that behind the booster, kind of like the factory spot, and then lay it on the engine like it's supposed to be. And then of course, the transmission stuff will go down there, but wiring. Right now I have the ignition key on. Um, as you can hear, As I relay's working, so that's plus. So we got power from here through the key on to this relay. This relay is powering up this relay right here. This relay right here powers all the circuits that you need to go down in your harness and make the LS run. Um, Basically, if the LS was in here right now and we had this purple wire hooked up to the starter and a battery cable to the starter, we'd turn it over and it'd turn over and then fire right up because all the circuits would be going. Um, got my fuel pump switch right here. This should be hot. I'll probably test it um, here in a second and verify it, but hook the multimeter up two on um, this circuits here i guess i could show you here quickly okay so here's a multimeter um 
Of course, I touch it to the positive, we get 13.4 volts. This 10 right here is an ignition. And when we touch the fuse, we should get reading on there. Yep. Now, when we go to unplug this, say the key switch goes off. Now we touch the same ignition and it should be dead. There we go, nothing. And plug it back in here really quick. Heard it click. And back to being powered. So now you can go through and check all these and see which ones are dead and which ones are not. Um, of course, all these ones are gonna be dead. I could wire this up to the actual purple wire and then use the ECM for um, starting purposes. You know, how they have a switch where you can't start it while it's already running kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna go through and test all my uh, fuses here and see which ones are hot, which ones are not. Um, I'm guessing that the fuel pump one is, I'm looking at the schematic here, but fuel pump one should be this 20, and it is. So that's good to know. Now let's see if, uh, I'm just going to turn the key off. So I'm sick of plugging that thing in and unplugging it. But we should get Nothing now when we are uh, back at the box. Simulate the engine shutting off. And this 10 is dead and the fuel pump still reading. Maybe that's a... Nope, oh, right there. Had it on the wrong one. And yeah, fuel pump now is dead. All right, so now I got all that wire kind of strewn. I got that secured in here, tidied up some stuff. I ran the loom underneath here, the harness. Um, I'm going to quick pop in the computer just so it's in here and then get this thing prepped to drop motor in. Yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Kind of a longer one. I guess it's part two on uh, the wire harness and actually getting it installed. Appreciate everyone. Got a lot of new subscribers. If you haven't, like, subscribed, do the little bell dingy thing. I think it's over here. And with that, catch you on the next one.